It's episode two of Cutler's Corner. Pretty quickly after episode one, uh, I said I was going to start trying to watch a little bit more of SmackDown, and I caught this week's episode, took some notes, thought about what I wanted to talk about. Uh, A little bit more high strung right now than I was yesterday. Yesterday I had just finished training legs, which consisted of 250 reps of Hindu squats and 250 reps of uh, leg presses. So I was a little bit drained, but right now I'm all hopped up on uh, actually a new pre-workout drink that I had decided to try. Not really a new drink, just a new flavor. Shattered Black Onyx Cherry Limeade. Uh, As my Twitters and Instagrams both say, I'm somewhat of a supplement junkie. And I gotta tell you, this stuff tastes like Kool-Aid. But, on to SmackDown. So, they opened the show with John Cena, who sent out a tweet earlier this week saying that he had to start 2016 off with shoulder surgery. Bummer. This guy can't seem to catch a break. Um, Which means some time on the shelf, possibly missing WrestleMania, which misses that WrestleMania payday, which I'm sure his bank account's not going to be hurt from it. But let's be honest, that's what all the guys in WWE are aiming for, is that WrestleMania payday. That's what they work all year for, so when they don't get it, it's got to be disappointing. But as I stated on my Twitter, which is Twitter handle Cutler Coalition, another man's, one man's uh, setback is another man's opportunity. So, we get Callisto, my boy Manny, Samurai Del Sol, getting a shot at the United States Championship against Alberto Del Rio at the Royal Rumble. Uh, One thing I wanted to say about John Cena, because lots of people have lots of different opinions on the guy. Um, He first came into prominence when I was still just a fan. Um, with the Doctor of Thugonomics gimmick. Um, as a child, I'm not a child, you know, as a 16-year-old kid, I thought he was the coolest thing ever. He was a white rapper. All of the guys my age liked Eminem, wanted to be Eminem, thought he was the coolest thing ever. My, how times have changed. Um, but you cannot deny what this guy has done for the wrestling business. He gives, 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 Uh, be it with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The guy's a workhorse. If you talk to anybody that knows him, you could just tell just by looking at him. He does not know the meaning of the word stop. Even when he is not doing things related to professional wrestling, the guy is working on his acting career, which, in my opinion, you know, some of his movies have been kind of eh, but I don't know if any of you guys have seen that movie Trainwreck. That has got to be the most entertaining thing I have ever seen John Cena do, bar none, even pro wrestling included. If you, the, the, the sex scene with him and Amy is, I had to watch it three or four times because myself and my brother and my wife, none of us could stop laughing. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, in addition to that opening angle with John Cena, Alberto Del Rio, I don't know about all of you, and feel free to comment and let me know, shoot me a direct message on Twitter or Instagram, but the Del Rio of now, in my opinion, number one, the conditioning that that man has gotten himself in, when you look at him now and you look at him on his previous run, he doesn't even look like the same person. He has leaned out so much. His upper body development has gotten so much better than it was before. I'm a huge, huge fitness freak. I don't, some people don't think I look like it, but I train very, very hard. I supplement, I diet, I do all those things. And so when I see a guy like Alberto Del Rio, who looked how he did before, not taking his wrestling ability into consideration, just by appearance, looked the way that he looked before, and now looks the way that he does now, kudos to him for getting himself into, obviously, the best shape of his life. And I'm more entertained by his character now, too. Um, the whole Mexican aristocrat with the, with the car, it, it was just too... JBL for me. Um, It had already been done. I think he is doing perfect 
with the angle that he's being given now as being the United States champion. And I am very much looking forward to the match that he has with Callisto at the Royal Rumble. It sucks for Sin Cara, but I am very, very happy that Callisto is going to get a chance to shine on his own. Um, moving on from that, uh, the New Day, I don't care what anybody says, is the most entertaining thing in the WWE right now, bar none. Some people think it's overplayed, some people think it's getting overpushed, but me personally, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting put out there because they keep getting the reaction that they get. And I, for one, am happy to see them get the time that they're getting. Um, it boggles my mind when I think of Big E Langston of 2013 and then Big E now. It just goes to show you that you never know what is going to work. Um, and I'm happy for all of them that they're, make, they're taking this opportunity and they're making so much of it. Um, moving on from that, the one other thing that I wanted to touch on from the show, I'm a big traditionalist in the sense that I'm a fan of guys looking the part in professional wrestling. Very outspoken about this at times, too. Um, I never used to be a fan of Kevin Owens for obvious reasons when you look at that. But the guy is winning me over every single week that I see him perform, that I see his promos, I see the reaction that he gets. He knows how to be that guy that people want to hate. And the fact that he can manipulate that so well makes me not care about his appearance. So... I hope he continues on the path that he is on. The angle between him and Dean Ambrose right now is outstanding. I think the finish for their match that they had on SmackDown was perfect. It sets them up to keep going, possibly for a different kind of match at the Royal Rumble. Who knows? Speaking of the Royal Rumble, something that I forgot to touch on when I was talking about Raw in the last episode, Chris Jericho makes his return and announces his name as an entrant into the Royal Rumble. Interesting. Dolph Ziggler tonight was announced as a entrant to the Royal Rumble. So there's two former WWE champions who are going to be in the mix in a match where 29 other guys other than Roman Reigns have the opportunity to change history. That makes for good programming. Regardless of what you think, that adds an element of excitement to the pay-per-view. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um... That's really about it. Haven't seen any movies since Friday. Uh, I'm excited for tonight. Sunday is my cheat day. I don't cheat all day. I might have a couple of protein bars, but I've been craving pasta a little bit, so I'm going to have some whole grain Alfredo pasta with some chicken. And I stumbled upon a treasure in a DVD store the other day and found Clerks 1 and 2 on DVD for $3 a piece. You can't beat that. So that's what my night is going to consist of. So... Look out for another episode later on this week. Next Saturday in Joliet, Illinois, Pro Wrestling Blitz brings you another outstanding show, which will feature former WWE superstar Matt Hardy. So if you haven't already gotten your tickets, you really need to get on doing that right now because that place is going to be packed. Matt hasn't been there for about five years now. The last time that he was there, they had to turn people away at the door. So if you don't have your tickets yet, get them now. Again, that's next Saturday, Joliet, Illinois, in St. Joe's Park, Pro Wrestling Blitz, featuring former WWE superstar Matt Hardy. I will obviously be there as well. Pro Wrestling Blitz is my home, and it's the very best wrestling in the Midwest. So, until next time, follow me on Twitter at Cutler Coalition, on Instagram, Cutler Coalition 88. This is Nick Cutler with Cutler's Corner.